Hello, I'm Charles Coves in Melbourne, Australia with Adrian Clark, the founder and managing director of Textile and Composite Industries, a company that for 19 years has been dedicated to promoting the hemp industry. This presentation is designed for our friends in Kentucky who are having a hemp conference and also for viewers on the internet into the future to give them a background briefing on the hemp industry. Adrian. Hello Charles. Lovely to be with you. Now, why did you get involved in the hemp industry 19 years ago? Um, it, I discovered hemp while, while researching a fast growing tree and I found that um, hemp was the, uh, the commodity that they used for literally thousands of years before DuPont started making paper from trees. Nearly all the paper was made from hemp or similar bast products and uh, it seemed uh, a shame that it's, it's not being used today. So of course I had to look at the history of why it was banned and I found uh, um, great irregularities in, the, uh, in the, um, the American legal system that enabled it to be banned. And then you, all, why, you also discovered why it wasn't being used, not only because it was banned, but because of the difficulties of processing. Yes, the, um, it, it's, it's the most intractable um, grown product that you can try and process. And um, it's been processed in very, very old fashioned ways, even right up to uh, recent years, they still uh, do a process called field retting or water retting. Um, and, uh, which, which is a Dutch word. It's a Dutch word for semi-rotting. Um, so, so our audience often will, kn will know that's the case. Yes. But because of your understanding of the complexities and difficulties of retting, either field or water, yeah. you then decided to design a machine to totally change the economics of hemp by the way that you process hemp. That's right. We, we discovered in Australia we couldn't either field ret because there are no farm subsidies to enable a farmer to leave his field for sev several weeks, up to many weeks, uh, covered in this material. We don't have um, uh, masses of farm labourers able to turn it over so that it is regularly, uh, um, uh, the, the retting is even. Uh, and, and the other form of retting is water retting, which uh, in Australia we can't use water like that. So you have invented a machine which is now patented called a decorticator, which is a term of art mm. in the hemp industry. That's and you've right. now presently got two types of machines, a, a, a small one and a large one. Would you please yeah. describe this machine that reduces the processing time of hemp from weeks down to one mm. hour? We found that you could strip the skin, which is the, where the fibre is, from the, uh, the woody core, uh, in, in a matter of seconds if you do it at the right time in the right way. And we found what that right time and right way was. So we developed um, what we now call the D8. It's our eighth version of a working decorticator. It's a commercial size one. And we can mount that either as a static machine for small crops or crops like uh, uh, in Eastern Europe where they have a lot of, uh, a lot of farm labor or the, uh, the Western style uh, one which is a bit like a combine harvester. It, uh, it, picks the, it cuts the crop, picks it up, decorticates it as you're moving through to harvest it. That means that theoretically you could be harvesting it in the morning and using it in a product, even a textile, by the late afternoon. So this machine that you have invented totally changes the economics, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And so for 19 years now, you have been working on this project and yes. now in Kentucky where hemp is illegal but canaf is not and other bass crops are mm. not, it is now possible for farmers in Kentucky, for farmers anywhere, mm. to choose to plant hemp because they can process it and turn it into valuable products. That's right. The, the alternative to our machine is to buy a huge European machine that's uh, in the vicinity of anything from 10 to 20 million dollars 
and uh, by the time it, you have rented your product and you have uh, processed it through these huge machines, uh, you've got a fibre that's almost useless except for a plastics filler. It cannot be turned into textiles because it's been damaged by the process and um, it takes you almost a year from when you cut the crop to when you can actually process it. With so our system, you process it instantly as you're harvesting and you produce a, uh, a fibre that can be used in textiles, it can be used in long line traditional uh, linen textiles or it can be used, uh, it can be broken down with a second pro process that we developed into a cotton staple. It can be either spun as 100% hemp or blended with cotton. So assuming, so this whole explosion of possible products from this from the hemp because of the way that it's then been processed what is your view it totally it changes the economics of farming so within kentucky when hemp is legal which is going to happen shortly yep. or in any place around the world what's your view around what this does for local communities being able to now process hemp and then add value to it if you can decorticate it on the farm, the first thing is the farmer has done the first value adding. In the other methods, uh, the mill owner, the person who owns these gigantic decorticators, he, he makes the first profit, whereas the farmer makes the first value add. Then within the region, because it is the local town, because it is already a, a usable material for making composites, or taking further into textiles, uh, building industries, products, building products is paper. the other one. I've been, we've been talking about the fibre, but the secondary product is the herd. Now, if you can imagine getting three tonnes of fibre, very valuable fibre, per hectare, which is about two and a half acres, and seven tonnes of herd, or shives, they call it in America, per hectare, and being able to turn that straight into building products. Every farmer can have a cash crop and they can turn it into paper, composite materials. I mean, Henry Ford made a car out of this stuff. So you can make motor cars out of it. You Lotus make, has yes, also made a motor car yes, out of it. Yes, Lotus made a, a, a car out of it called the Elise. So there's a whole bunch of new products that are available for each local community and that can rejuvenate economies, which is what Kentucky is interested in, or the whole American market would right around the world. Now, what is the possible markets globally for hemp products, both fibre and herd products? The herd products are generally used locally because they're a bit bulky and light to transport, but you can turn them into hemp bricks, which is the most superior uh, insulation material that's been used in building uh, of late. Um, the, uh, but the fibre, it can travel further because it's light, it's, you can value add it into a product anywhere where you use fibreglass, you can use hemp fibre. It will re replace carbon fibre in some cases? In some cases it will replace carbon fibre. Uh, so, th so globally these products will be saleable. Now, because we're yes. on a taut, short, taut, we're on a short time frame for our audiences, what is the your vision for Kentucky for America right now in the northern hemisphere my understanding is that that you want orders for decorticated machines from America so that we can start producing them for American markets now for their harvest in August that's that's correct we could if if magically Kentucky were allowed to grow hemp today they could plant it today and we could have machines in the field working for them to, to, to extract this fibre and this herd this year. And your, and your vision for the manufacturing of these machines eventually, do you, is your vision to eventually have American engineering companies making these machines for oh, textile and composite absolutely, industries? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, officers at our um, Victorian Department of Agriculture said to us just recently during a meeting, um, we would like to see your machine on every farm. Every farm should be growing at least 10, 20 hectares of this every year. 
And lastly, for the value of hamburgers, many audiences will realise there's also a food component. We haven't even spoken about the food component, and globally there's talk about the need for more nutritious foodstuffs. What's your view on hemp as a food source? Well, everything you can do with soybean, you can do better with hemp when it comes to foodstuffs. It is a far more digestible uh, protein. It is, in fact, the most assimilable protein that a human being can eat from a plant. So the, the uh, governments are screaming out saying, let's grow um, a lot of very high protein, very nourishing food, We've got to look after the uh, essential fatty acids. Nine, six, and three are in hemp in the correct balance for human beings. Um, and uh, it's there, it's just waiting to be done. And lastly, because we're fast running out of time on this presentation, yeah. what does hemp do to the soil in which it grows? Well, um, if you're an organic farmer, you'd absolutely understand and cherish the fact that the hemp roots go very, de very deep and they break down very quickly and they create organic carbon in the soil. They put about four tonnes. So you get 10 tonnes of matter measured dry above the soil and about four tonnes below the soil. And that turns into, uh, into organic carbon. It also carbon fixes. And uh, if you grow it biodynamically, you're actually feeding the, uh, the uh, soil microbes that eat carbon out of the air and nitrogen and create humus. So it is a, a fantastic engine for revivifying all soils. So there will be, through this presentation, there are pictures of the two machines, the D8 and the HD3, and further videos of the operation of these machines on Textile and Composite Industries website, which you should go and visit to get more detailed information about these machines. Adrian, I look forward to your machines being throughout America, throughout the whole world, because the hemp industry is going to totally rejuvenate economies of many places. Thank you. I, I absolutely believe that and have for all these years. Thank you and have a great conference.